you'll have to excuse me today, but I have to get something off my chest. February 27th of this year was a dark day for the Jewish people. There were two brothers, 120, 121, or 22, by the name of Hillel and Yagel Yaniv, who in a terrorist attack were killed. Horrible, terrible. In response, a group of what we call settlers attacked the neighboring city of Huara and went on a rampage in which they killed one person, wounded perhaps hundreds, burnt down houses and cars, and in the middle of which they stopped to Davin Marav. To me, that was such an ugly scene. And the riot, the rampage, was universally condemned. But not universally. There were members of the Knesset in Israel who said they should have burnt down the entire city. Others justified it. Look what they do to us. This was nothing. This is the only way to stop them. Still others who condemned them, condemned them with a but. Sorry, but here. Yeah. An article in the Wall Street Journal by Gil Troy. The Huwara riot was no pogrom. What's the difference if it, you call it a pogrom or you don't call it a pogrom? This is not the time for semantics. This is just the time to say this was horrible. This is not the way Jews act. Another article, just who is pogromming who in the Jerusalem Post. And it starts, compared to the ongoing Palestinian terrorist mega pogrom against Israeli Jews, the Huwara rampage must rank as one of the weakest pogroms and the only ugly history of pogroms. So where is the anguish over Israeli Jews continuously murdered by Palestinian terrorists. That's a legitimate question, but not when Jews have rampaged and destroyed parts of a village. That's not to, time to raise the question of they do it to us. That's sorry, but, and you can buy a book called Sorry, 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 The Case for Good Apologies, which tells us you can't add a but to sorry. You have to just say Sorry. And you know who understood this? Our forefather Yaakov, in one of the more unfortunate incidents in the Torah, we're told that Dina, the only daughter of Yaakov, was taken by Shem, the leader of a local tribe, and she was raped by them. And in retaliation, her brothers went and wiped out the city of Shechem, which happens to be just four or five miles from where Huwara is. But listen to how Yaakov 
reacted on his deathbed. He gives blessings to his children. And the blessing he gives to Shimon and Levi is not much of a blessing when he says to them, Shimon and Levi are brethren, stolen tools are their weapons. Let my soul not come into their council, unto their assembly. Let my glory not be united. Curse thee their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, it was cruel. That's the way a Jew speaks. When Jews take the law into their own hands. That's the way a Jewish leader speaks about acts of terrorism perpetrated by Jews. Even if the Jews are his own children. No, sorry, but just sorry. Which brings us to the, this week's Torah portion of Vayikra. The Torah portion of Vayikra and the part of the book of Vayikra discusses the laws of sacrifices. There's a great debate about why we were told to bring animal sacrifices. The Rambam, Maimonides, said it was only to wean us away from the idolatry that was practiced by the Egyptians. But Nachmanides, the Ramban gives a very different explanation. Listen to his words. Since acts of man are accomplished through thought, speech, and deed, God commanded that when one sins, he bring a sacrifice. He should rest his hands upon the animal corresponding to the deed. He should orally confess corresponding to his speech. And he should burn the innards in the fire corresponding to thoughts and desires. The thighs correspond to a man's hands and feet which perform the actions of man. He should cast the blood on the altar corresponding to his own blood. By doing all this, man will consider that he sinned against his God with body and soul. And it is fitting that his blood be spilled and his body be burnt if not for the kindness of the creator who accepted from him a substitute and ransom of this sacrifice. So its blood is in lieu of his blood, a soul for a soul, and the major limbs on the sacrifice correspond to his major limbs. Do you understand? When you sin, you're entire body and soul has to repent. It's sorry. No if, ands, or buts. Shabbat Shalom.